Welcome viewers, viewers, welcome listeners. I'm Alex, your host on behalf of Momentum Works for answering the Y series. Typically, your host of EOA, Entrepreneurs of Asia, a podcast interviewing my some of my friends and some amazing entrepreneurs I know shaping the tech scene in Asia. But for here today, we are continuing our collaboration, discussing openly and somewhat more concisely around specific topics of interest in trending news, relevant topics, concepts, or ideas that we feel are shaping the tech world for Southeast Asia. So with us, the usual suspects, uh, as you know from the last episode, if you haven't been following, uh, the CEO of Momentum Works, Jiang Gan, Alfonso, the head of Insights for Momentum Works, and yours truly, founder of EOA. So today's topic, community group buy. Uh, not, not something completely new, but it seems to be a lot more relevant. So I will give a little brief history. So it'll be a little bit of a long monologue, uh, but I think the context is important and should help shape the discussion for later on. So I think, China kind of really popularized and we could discuss this later to a degree of you know how viable it is, but it seems very viable, at least from a top line perspective. Group buy is very big, right? And it was rooted in internet forums. And I'm going to butcher the Chinese probably, so Jiang, please correct me. It's uh, the term in China is uh, tuan gua. Is that right? Tuan guo, team buying, right? Essentially. Uh, but Oh. Yeah, but however, uh, you know, even though it's really big in China, yeah, uh, essentially, yeah, <clears throat> one of the earliest. De- how do? You, sorry, just just curious. Team uh, buy. How, how, how do you say uh, that actually, I don't know the specific technical term for group buy, team buy, uh, direct direct. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe, yeah, maybe, I mean, it would probably uh, be second. borrowed words, like sign on via, right? Like, are but, uh, very similar. Yeah, it's uh, the same roots. But anyway, so uh, we have yeah. Group Buy yeah. also has roots actually in America f- anyway, from the year ahead. 2000, right? Uh, with the financial backing of Microsoft, co-founder Paul Allen started a e-commerce company called Mercata with a business plan dubbed WeCommerce. Uh, and this was a website that offered high electronic deals where the more people who signed up, the more the price of the electronic product actually dropped. So this was the very, early, very one of the earliest forms of group buy. And it was shut down in 2001, a year later, because it couldn't compete with Amazon, right? So if you fast forward to like 2006, mm-hmm. then we have more famously, at least in the Western world, uh, Groupon. Groupon was born, right, from the co-founder, Andrew Mason. He tried canceling his mobile phone contract. And then he was kind of pissed off that he felt that there was some way that he could leverage a large number of people to get collective bargaining power. Uh, so then a year later, Mason and his co-founder launched something called The Point, right? based off this idea of the tipping point where you use social media to get people together to accomplish a goal. And that was later transformed into something called Groupon that we know today, right? Uh, and the, the biggest use case they found in Chicago was people wanting to save money, right? And uh, that's why they t- kind of pivoted and started to only focus on Groupon, which is a portmanteau of group and coupon. And then, you know, fast forward three or four later, four, three or four years later, right, by, by you know, 2010, we're talking, we had thousands of clones all around the world. And uh, probably because of Andrew Mason and Groupon and Group Buy, you know, indirectly, it's responsible for like my career, Jiang Gun's career, because Rocket Internet famously sold Groupon to Groupon US for the international expansion. Uh, and then, you know, by August 2010, China already had more than 1,215 group sites. Uh, if, all types of clones. Rocket was kind of part of that mess. Uh, it was a very crazy story. Um, but I think what was really interesting is that uh, that that ecosystem of what China had, that further evolved more, right? And by 2015, you know, after the golden age of e-commerce where you had J, uh, JD, Taobao, um, Alibaba, right? You had two rising stars, in the group buy space competing at the same level in terms of gross transactions and the amount of e-commerce that was flowing, right? You had Yunji and Pinduoduo. Is, is that the correct names, Jiangan? Uh, yes, um, but, 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 but I think the whole story started much earlier. So, so when Pro- Groupon was, um, was, was popular, um, I mean, you mentioned that there are, that there are thousands of, 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 of copycats of Groupon, right? Um, yeah. I, I think in China, there, there, there was this, uh, um, connotation of like a um, like a battle of thousand group by uh, websites that was I think about ten years ago when Groupon was popular. So um, so you had a few which um, which grew really big and um, and almost approached the 
the point of, of, of doing IPO, but somehow, I mean, most of them failed. Uh, this one company which uh, which stuck out uh, called Meituan. Meituan, yeah. Yeah, you probably know this company as a food delivery and hyper local services, but they started as a group group by side, and um, and you see that the name has uh, has a Tuan for Tuanguo. Mm, yeah, so, just like Tuanguo, yeah. Yeah, that that's how it started, and um, I think I think a key thing uh, it did right at that time is that everybody um, doing group by. Uh, wanted to expand their their sort of um, size, and uh, the problem the problem of, of the coupon model is that you do you do services. So basically, you sell you sell restaurant coupons, you sell attraction tickets, etc. etc. But it doesn't sell goods. I, I think later on, I mean, some of the coupon countries started started doing goods. But the the thing with e-commerce goods is that um, yeah. is that you need to have fulfillment, which is much more complicated. I mean, if yeah. you if you sell a coupon to a restaurant, I mean, the person will make his own way to the restaurant, right? But if you sell the person a, uh, say, a, a, a packet of a, of a toilet paper, the person needs to go somewhere to collect the toilet paper, or you have to deliver that to the person's house. So, so, so lots of people did um, did group pie of goods and shift it, and Meituan didn't. So, and uh, and and what happened is that um, after those guys started doing group buy of goods, um, Alibaba joined. And if this is probably more current day, right? What we're seeing? Oh, no, that's fourteen. That's fourteen years ago. Okay, so even even like uh, that long ago, uh, even the big e-commerce guys were already looking and doing group buy as well. I think um, I think Alibaba launched this service called Ju Hua Shan, which which was essentially group buy, and uh, that killed most of the most of the group buy players delivering goods because uh, because they already had a, a fairly good advantage over the over the sellers and the manufacturers and the supply yeah. chain. I mean, even back then, when Groupon was popular at the peak, before you know it kind of faded to irreverence, mm -hmm. uh, the Groupon was offered six billion dollars uh, by Google, and Google mm -hmm. turned it down. But even Google then tried to replicate and build their own Group by website, but also didn't get traction either. And it seems like the Chinese companies seemed, at least in my viewpoint and from what I was researching, there seems to be more of a real pain point, especially in rural China, where. If you do real group buy, there's real tangible benefits for the end users where you know they actually can get access to products they normally wouldn't at much better prices. And I think the key learnings from Groupon and the Chinese companies is that if you can do community and slash social, community or social, plus mobile, plus chat are very critical factors which allowed this to scale very rapidly, right? And I think early on, as you mentioned um, before we started talking was that the reason why Pin Duo Duo was very attractive in the early days was because the customer acquisition cost was anywhere from three to four times cheaper than, say, Alibaba, Taobao, or, or JD, because I think there was real value in a network effect where people would actually get their friends on board, right? There's kind of this viral effect to, to band together. And then the actual sellers got benefit from economies of scale. Uh, whereas Groupon, right? So they had all three of these elements, community plus mobile plus chat. However, it became more around commerce where they removed community. So you didn't need the value of group buy. And then suppliers would have to discount up to 50%, but then they wouldn't get the scale what they would need to actually make the economics work, right? Um, so those are some of the, the interesting kind of things going on from, from Groupon to China. And the last thing of the history I would like to point out, though, is that you know, innovation in the West just didn't completely die. There's a company called MassDrop founded in 2012, which is basically a community of keyboard enthusiasts, mechanical keyboard enthusiasts, where they would have a design put up onto a platform, a marketplace, and then you would need to have X amount of people committing to buying that keyboard before it's actually produced in China and then shipped out to you, right? And I think First Round Capital did an amazing cover on this story, and it's very relevant in a different kind of group buy. And there's still innovation coming, but it's not as big as you know and attractive as the Chinese companies and valuations. So my first question to you guys would be then, you know, is... Group by a pri is is group by a proven and profitable business model that can work anywhere, or is it certain markets? Uh, you know, also I, right now what we're probably seeing in China, what, my, what I'm guessing is that the cost of CACA is increasing because they're trying to keep pace with growth and trying to be as big as the other Chinese uh, e-commerce players, right? So, does this business model make sense? Do you think it's profitable, or where are we at currently with group by? Alfonso. Do, do you want to take that one or okay mm. i can take it so some so let's clarify some things like china like in china seems to be seems to be working right if they had 
1,000 companies, something is going on there, right? So I think it's important to contextualize what's going on with the e-commerce in China because it is yeah. a bit weird. And why is weird? It's, it's weird because it's, it is actually higher than other other regions. So for example, if in in in, in the US, like the, the total uh, e-commerce is around maybe 15% of the total retailing, in China, it is like 28 or 30 wow, okay. or something like that. that, so that it's crazy. crazy. So you can see that you can see that basically what's going on with with group buys in China, it could be something that is particularly uh, particularly that it is something particular for that region, for that specific country. And the other thing is about the success or not of the business model. So I think that. I think that the, the business model has been successful, right? And I think that we shouldn't we shouldn't confuse the concept of a business model with a good competitive strategy, right? So one thing is the business model that has worked before, and well, we have ten years of history to prove that. And the other thing is basically what are the different strategies that companies use in order to differentiate themselves and to provide value to the to the customer. So. Yes, I think that it has worked, and I think that why this is particularly interesting in China because, well, they have a lot of e-commerce yeah. going on. I mean, I think so, your your first yeah. point is interesting, kind of like what I mentioned. I, I suspect at least why there's big traction initially and why it got to a certain uh, size was because I felt there was more of a real pain point for people. It's, it's the same reason why I feel Lazada has been more successful than Zalora. I think there was meal, more of a real use case and value proposition. Um, but I feel, you know, as, as you get bigger and bigger, you just become another e-commerce player, right? And, you know, is that real value proposition beyond that scale and size already? And, you know, um, it, can, can someone, I don't know if you guys have the, the knowledge or data, but can someone qualify that it's a proven model in such a sense that it's just not about pumping valuations and top line. And we're actually gonna see profits coming from this like, are these guys who are listed and IPO'd as a group by company, is it a well-oiled business machine that can print cash for them? I think the, I think you, you are absolutely right to say that, I mean, for any group by site uh, or group by app, uh, at some point in time when they achieve scale, uh, they, they, they will look more and more like, like a um, e-commerce company. So, 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 so I, I think I've discussed this, this point offline with Alfonso a, a few times. Uh, and uh, I think lots of people sort of miss the size e-commerce, but e-commerce just retail uh, through a different channel. Of course. And um, and and group buys is, is a way to to acquire customers at lower cost. And uh, I think the mod, I mean, o over the history, you have multiple innovations of I mean, how to reach out to customers. Right? You have Mway, you have all these like pyramid marketing schemes. I mean, all of them geared towards reaching out to more customers, increasing the sales, but lowering lowering the, the, the cost of marketing, right? So, yeah. um, so, so, so I think group buys the latest attempt. And, um, and, and, and I also believe that um, when group buy in China took off or when e-commerce in China took off in general, um, it's not because there's some magic there, but, uh, but, but, but over the, um, I think since 2003, when China joined, joined the WTO, there was a massive surge of production. And, uh, and around 2007, 2008, so um, the foreign trade was hurt because of the financial crisis. So, so there was lots of surplus capacity, and especially of, of consumer goods, which they had to like sell somewhere. And you have like massive amount of like wholesalers, um, factories, and uh, lots of players in, in the supply chain who are looking for buyers. And um, and whoever who provide channels for them to reach domestic buyers would. Uh, would eventually be able to attract lots of sellers to be on board. So, 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 so I think that's how everyone um, came about. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys noticed. Um, it's, um, it's it's not that obvious outside China yet, but but inside the country, you, you see this huge wave last couple of weeks of uh, of big players going to community. What do we call community group buy? So, um, so, so, so I think I think Meitai is doing that. BD, a red handling company, is doing that. Um, Pinduoduo is uh, is doing that big time, um, and uh, I think Alibaba has has uh, has a number of services doing something similar. And the rumors that the JD's founder uh, Richard Liu, uh, the guy who was arrested for alleged uh, sexual uh, sexual assault in the US, oh yes, in Minnesota, yeah. yeah, I think two years ago. Yeah, he has he has 
personally led the team to, to to actually launch assault in this. So so it seems that it becomes um, it becomes something super messy now. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah. so how how much? Okay. So I, I'm not too sure if we have a clear answer. Maybe, maybe we could answer this later uh, mm. in, in uh, after the episode. But like so. Maybe these companies are profitable, right? But it sounds like to me that they they can make money, they can have cash. The business model works, right? But it's mm -hmm. more more like an e-commerce company at this point, right? So was Group I just purely a, a, an entry point strategy? And you know, how much of this community actually exists in the Group I model, and how much and how much benefit are the suppliers getting, right? Because this is why Group On didn't continue as big as these other companies right so is the, so what i guess what i'm really asking does this element really exist or has they just used it to get really big and massive and become an e-commerce player or does is there something really still there for group buy does uh, this community matter does the supplier benefit does it both supply and demand equally benefit or are we just transitioning away to another big player after getting scale and mass and raising money hmm. uh I think that, okay, it is interesting that you raised that question because I suppose that it is also going to be related with the, with the competitive landscape of a particular country. So let's say that you have a, you have a country that basically there are only a few, a few retailers online and offline, and basically you won't have too much competition. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're, you, will have, you will face issues related to maybe high prices of different kinds of items. So for example, in Latin America, uh, many, many items tend to be priced higher because everything is imported. So maybe you want to find some sort of alternative in order to find that kind of discounted yeah. price. So I think that it is important to to realize that there should be some sort of need that will push the consumer to use this kind of uh, yeah. platforms, right? And I think that, well, finding a, an advantage in terms of a price discount, it is, it is definitely one of those one of those things. So I think that it is highly related with the with how competitive or not is actually is actually yeah. the market, right? The market of the particular product that you are actually looking yeah. for. So so my, my, my viewpoint on this is like I, I almost feel from what I'm reading in the headline. The headlines are like, oh every, like group buy is the new user behavior in future. To me it almost sounds sensationalist. But from what I'm understanding and what I'm looking at then, to me group buy makes sense for certain verticals, certain products. I don't think group buy makes sense on a mass scale for every single product where everything on e-commerce is going to be group buy, right? It's just the, the the economics will not stack up that way. So it almost seems like it's going to either be a strategy or a channel versus, you know, I mean, I, I think initially it was a way to be a Trojan horse to get more users on your platform. And then um, I don't know, maybe I don't know if I'm being too cynical, but I think it's there's a natural size for group buy in different markets and certain verticals. And I think up to that certain point, you're just becoming an e-commerce player. And I think we're way past the tipping point, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think, sorry. So I think that one of the, one of the main advantages of these companies when they, when they came into existence is that it was like for consumers, it was like one way to avoid going through the typical retailer yeah. and actually get an yeah, actual correct. discount, actual. right? But the thing is that when this becomes, becomes massive, after that, you, you, you begin to see that the discounts are not so uh, are not so high as before, and basically it loses its its yeah. charm, if you can say something like that. So I think that I think that part of the magic or part of the attractive of of those companies was basically that kind of uh, capability to to skip mm, the retailer yeah. and going directly to the to the yeah. to the seller or to the factory itself and get that kind of discount because actually you may not believe that these things are so uh, are, are prices so high so, in reality yeah this is why you want to use so the then this begs the question if this is true right if this thesis and hypothesis is true does that make group buy not completely overvalued and it's just a ponzi scheme and everyone's just pumping money to get up higher prices than trying to exit right that, that's what it almost seems like at this point then right it's like it, it would only work for certain things and that value is probably past that point and then but everyone seems to be pumping and it's like you said there's thousands of guys you know, but the question is how viable are they and it will it consolidate something bigger and is there going to be real value at the end of the day i think the mm. i think i agree with uh with uh with alfonso's point that you have to separate uh, whether the business model works versus the, i mean the, the, the sort of competitive strategies um i personally i don't think um 
the, the, this this kind of buying communities are loyal. Yeah, I I don't think you can keep them. I mean, they they they, they I mean, usually these communities are not spontaneous. They are sort of organized by a uh, a, a key person, right, who leads the community, yeah. who 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 organizes the buying activity, who even sometimes arranges for arranges the the, the fulfillment. So, so 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 these people are are. Like small businessman, right? They, they, I mean, they're like agent. They go with whoever that's um, that's giving them the best, uh, best subsidies, best incentives, best, um, best prices. So, so, I, so, 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 I don't think these guys are loyal, and uh, I don't think the the factories are loyal as well. I mean, factories will sell to to whoever mm. who gives them the the, the, the largest volume and uh, and uh, this hassle, right? So, but that, that, okay. So, so, go ahead. So, 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 I think I think what is critical is this company's fulfillment. Capabilities are they able mm. to move things effectively, uh, massively through fa from factories to the end consumers or or the groups or, or the communities? So so I think that's a that's a critical capability that Groupon never built. That's mm. why they couldn't move goods I and mean, all yeah. services. Yeah, but, but we're also talking a very uh, like a very natural natural competitive advantage. Like China produces what percentage of the world's consumer goods? Probably what like almost all of it, right? Uh, so you're you're talking about a very mm. unique supply constraint where, um, you know, if if a group of people go to so much readily available supply that could produce anything, you know, that's not just not going to happen in the U.S. The U.S. doesn't manufacture anything there, right? So that, and it's almost why probably Groupon met an early demise because it was just all consumer centric without any of the production advantages that they have locally, right? So there probably are real natural right. value being created because of the supply of China. And then, okay, so this would beg to my, the last section though, which we'll, uh, I will jump up before we move forward to that question. I want, before we move on, I just wanted to know from a social standpoint then, assuming group buy is as big and as real and as good as it is, is it good for society or does it encourage just really <laughs> bad behavior and you know i would just spend money capitalism blah, blah blah right you know and climate change and people just wasting things or or what do you guys think is it, or is it net good for society you want to start first Alphonse? yeah uh okay i i don't have the i i suppose that i don't have the best answer about this but uh it, it depends on the kind of product right so for example if you're buying garbage yeah I don't know. There's a lot of people. Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> like cheap things, cheap products that you don't know how reliable they are. Maybe they're going to broke very easily. Um, you, don't, you don't know anything about the quality. And basically, you maybe they are very cheap, actually, through the, the group buy uh, platform. And you, you, you ended up accumulating many stuff like that. I don't think that well, that is well, something that is going to be helpful. Let's, for let's society, look at ourselves right? uh, during the pandemic. How much useless crap did you guys accumulate down in Singapore? Right. Well, I, I, I actually <laughs> get rid of some of my <laughs> so, stuff. So you could buy more but, in, right? <laughs> right? Right. But the thing is, um, I think they, they, they are actually very, they can, act, they can add value if, if they are actually offering mm -hmm. good quality items. Um, and basically, they do what many of the standard or, or the traditional retailers cannot do, basically to offer a, 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 a believable yeah. discount. Because in many cases, people don't believe a discount, uh, yeah. in the price that so, is discounted. So a, a, re, a real discount for, a, for, a, for an item that you know that it could be, that is overpriced. Okay. So let's, 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 let's take that. Extra. So before we get to Jangan's answer, let's do a little tangent. Is that the future of group buy then where it's, uh, the next generation is a very high quality goods, but real purchasing power through the community that of wanting higher, better branded quality goods. That's for Alfonso. Yeah. For, me? Not for, this, for either for, one. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I Okay, it, I think it, I think it really the, the price is doesn't matter. I think that the, what what is important is to actually to be able to add value by offering products that are high quality and that are not going to be just something that is <laughs> that is not I don't know I don't know I don't know how to say this. It's something that is not I, useful, you know. Um, but I think that this is not only related to. The group buy, well, yeah, know, it's, it's tied to, it's tied to really commerce in general, but it, it's very rele relevant for group buy yeah. in China if we think I, that I, supply I, is special, right? I, 
I kind of disagree about the quality notion to 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 an extent because um, uh, I remember when I was a kid. So uh, so my my maternal grandpa lives in the countryside. I mean, he's from a relative in China. of family. Yeah, in China. Uh, but but when I went to the village, I mean, lots of people were poor and uh, they would buy whatever that's available. So so it's, it's versus have have versus have not. So so people didn't care about quality that day. I mean I mean a plastic shovel. I mean even if you can. The quality is very shitty, but mm -hmm. it's like having a shovel versus not having a shovel. So, but 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 as the society evolved, now people care about quality. So, yes, um, yeah, um, which which you, which is a function of wealth distribution, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but but it's it's not only that. Like, if you create things that are bad quality, um. I don't know. They're gonna broke yeah. or anything. Yeah. So I think that that is actually not related itself and, and with what, what, being low with having low income because for example people with low income they value a lot the things that they have and they in, in some cases they i don't know they save their their pants they save their kitchen things because you they treat them with, with, with a lot of care because they know that they are high quality and they treat mm, them with some sort point. of respect so I, I i think that if you offer bad quality stuff well, it's not going to be something okay, good I right? see what you related mean, so, yeah. to anything so, so it ties back to your answer of good or bad yeah but 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 that's something yeah. that the market will adjust it yourself, right? I mean, somebody who consistently sells bad quality stuff, and people will not buy from them if there's a competition of people still selling. Yeah. Yeah. Ex ex exactly that, and you can see that in many cases the group but, buy things are offering exactly that kind of products that are a bit are a but, bit like. Yeah. But by by then the shady. capitalists already made their money, and there's one topic that people don't really talk about is no, the, I don't know if you guys know anything about this, but refunds in group buy. How much of mm -hmm. refunds is actually happening in group buy? Do you guys know anything? I don't think there's much refund coming on because because refund is more than just refund, right? I mean, refund would, would need of like taking the goods back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, so, so I, I I'm not sure about exact policy, but but I doubt. I mean, I think there are refund happening, but I doubt um, how much of that would be, would would be involved. Yeah. In the, 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 the reason why I brought it up because it was one of the, the research topics that came up where I think it's um, underestimated, right? So I think it's mm -hmm. a lot higher than people think, and it's a lot more damaging, right? And then, so I, I guess then, Jenkins, what are, are you saying? Net good or net bad for society in terms of group buy, in terms of you know encouraging so, consumer behavior, or people just pumping it up like you know uh, Alfonso is saying, they're just taking the money on cheap goods and then becoming rich, and then you know people don't benefit as much, <laughs> you know. You know, you know, some Chinese company did that in Indonesia about two years ago. They sold things with very, very bad quality, and hoping that I mean, some people. I mean, it's cash on delivery. If people don't pay, they don't lose lose anything. But if 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 people pay, that's like net gain because the value of the, the goods they were selling is like close to nothing. And I and I also know companies which um, deliver empty boxes. So yeah. you, you buy th you buy wow. things. I mean, that, that's that's just general commerce, but uh, but we group it as well. So so you buy something. And uh, what you receive is uh, is uh, is empty box. So they're banking yeah. on the fact that a certain percentage of the people will not check what's inside the box be before paying. That's that's fair. Yeah, I mean that happens yeah, yeah, almost yeah. across all e-commerce. But I mean, I'm sure also relevant for Group I too, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so 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 I think one key argument in China now, or one key debate now, is that with, with all these guys entering uh, the Group I, uh, the community Group I per se, and that, that would be this. Uh, displace the small merchants, the guys who have been like you know, you know selling vegetables mm -hmm. in the market, the, the guys who run a corner shop and stuff. Um, personally, I don't think it will happen because um, um, because these guys, I mean, these small merchants, they they are not dumb, they are smart. Yeah, yeah. They will try to find ways to benefit from that. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, somebody's coming to do group buy. They, let me be the be the head the of the community. For it. Yeah, yeah the distributor for it, and, uh, and 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 they are smart, smart enough to. To deal with it, I mean, there have been, there've been multiple, multiple waves of sort of modernization which will push the small merchants away. But but if you go to like even the even the, the most sophisticated cities in China, you can still see like a corner shops, uh, small merchants actually surviving and actually pretty well. They play cards, whatever. I mean, and um, and and I, and I think many countries from Indonesia to India, they worry a lot about like you know giant players sweeping away the small merchants. I just don't think that will happen. Okay, so uh, give us your answer. Net good, net bad. I think it's net good. Net good. Okay, interesting. Uh, so then Alfonso says it depends if it's uh, the quality of goods, this kind of thing. 
Yeah, yeah, but I, I would say I would say net, net, net okay. bad because I think that companies are a bit more. There is some sort of mm. moral hazard or some 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 sort of ethics yeah. in all of this, and I think that this is something that is happening in also in other, not only in this kind of business model, but also in other okay. kind of business so, model that you have you will you are more tempted to sell garbage in order true. to just take wasteful some, wasteful capitalism. To, 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 but, but, <laughs> but, uh, right. but so well, but yeah, also, I, I, you said go separate go the business model from the competitive strategy, right? <laughs> No, yeah, this is yeah, personal, yeah, personal, I, I opinion, know, personal opinion, personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, I know. But in this case, I, I think this is is net bad because all of this, uh, well, because of offering yeah, garbage. Yeah. That that's that, that's why I think it's net bad. You know, I think that selling garbage to people that believe in, in yeah. I don't know, in the utility yeah. of that product. Uh, I mean, there, there is a nuanced good. position in between, right? So there are certain use cases for people in rural areas where cheap stuff and you know just you know one and done you know i use it for a little bit throw it away there is that kind of value in it because uh, they can afford other stuff but at the same time it probably will also be attached to encouraging a lot of other excess things that you don't don't need and it just doesn't have a net positive value for society we're just accumulating I think, crap I, I, th I think things will evolve right i mean remember a few years ago fast fashion was super popular and a lot of things that were, were sort of in fast fashion were, were I mean, not crap but but things which which were built in, using synthetic materials, they couldn't last, and they end up being garbage. I mean, it's still the case that hasn't changed. Look, the richest people in the but, world are from fast fashion still. You know, but 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 you see that uh, I mean, the consumers around us they're moving away from fast fa fashion. People are actually build, uh, buying things is, which could last a bit longer. This is Western media talking about like you know the next Silicon Valley company where they want you know focus on sustainable goods. I don't know how real that is, man. You go look at their closet; they're all buying fast fashion still. I don't know. But I, okay. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Let, let's 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 um, yeah. let's let's just get one more call before we move uh, to yeah. the last section. Uh, yeah. So is it overhyped and overvalued? Would you be shorting it, or are you buying long for uh, group buy, Alfonso? No, no, I, I wouldn't do anything. You want to touch it with a ten foot pole? <laughs> All right, Jangan, long or short? So, so no. sep okay, separating competitive strategy and business model, that means that you are long or short the companies or you are long short the ETF, right? In a way. ETF. I mean, just a general concept, you know, is it overvalued, overhyped, and it's just going to like crash? Are people just Ponzi scheming it now or what? what? Or I, do you I think mean, there's long term I, I, value. I, I, I see this as, as part of e commerce. I, okay. I, I, see, I, I see the companies which are, which, which, which are using this opportunity. Where they have massive consumers coming in to build their fulfillment uh, yeah. capabilities for the long term, I would loan this company. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's let's so so we have one uh, yeah. one not touching it and one long in general. I mean thematically, <laughs> I think I think you're I think you're right, correct. You know, long <laughs> e-commerce, but as long as it evolves, though, I don't know. I think there is a ne you know, negative element to it that that's just not yeah. really doesn't feel nice just by talking with you guys. But um, yeah. uh, the, for the last section, then. You know, especially we're talking about China having a unique supply, um, you know, and this kind of applies to Southeast Asia, too. And also with, you know, the trade wars with America, people wanting to diverse away, diversify away from China. Why hasn't Group I become bigger in Southeast Asia, where we do have unique factories that are also producing and manufacturing? Uh, but I don't feel it's as big. I mean, during the Groupon days, yes, there was clones in every market and Rocket probably bought all of them. And some of our friends were the ones who sold it to Rocket, too, that we know of. Right. Um so, but why isn't it as big as Southeast Asia at this point in time? Um, okay, so even if there is some sort of production capacity in in many countries in 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 Southeast Asia, they are still they are still not enough developed in order to compete with other other countries, especially China. And the other thing is is that my initial point was about uh, about e-commerce in general, about the comparison of the U.S. versus versus China in terms of the uh, e-commerce penetration. And I said that in China it's like thirty percent, mm. and in the U.S. it's like fifty percent, and in Singapore it's like ten percent. So Singapore is like ten percent. So you can imagine that for the rest of the emerging countries in Southeast Asia, it's For actually sure. lower than that. So you can see that there is a big there is a big difference there. Um, why it is not going to work in the same way than, than China and in the U.S. So, so there are actually less factories um, 
there are actually less factories than other con than, than other than than other regions, other countries. Um, also, what are the major what are the, the what are the most what are the most important products being produced mm. in Southeast Asia? Uh, you will have like ma ma machinery, machinery yeah. right? Like vehicle parts and things like that. Well, some countries are specializing in textiles for a long for a long time. In in, in Indonesia, you have a lot of you have like ten percent of the of, of of the industrial output concentrated in agriculture, and you have another. I don't remember seven percent or something like that that is concentrated in the creation of food food items, basically processed food uh, and, and vegetables. So um, I don't think it's still the manufacturing. Um, I don't know how. I don't know if we are producing those, those kind of household goods I, that, I, uh, yeah. that will match perfectly the kind of items that we are, yeah. that that a group buy will create. Everything is like the high tech goods that will that someone will buy like a, a smartphone or a TV or something like that. Everything is, most of that is produced yeah. in China. Well, so, I mean, I, I, for, I mean, there's definitely a lot of consumer, I mean, there's plenty of consumer goods I know produced. I mean, look, Vietnam, they produce for some of the biggest brands in the world is very similar to China of what they're, you know, the, the, of course on a much smaller scale, mm -hmm. like you're saying. So I agree with the size, the size is definitely going to be an issue. And, but I mean, even with still, you know, it could still lend to a pretty, it's not going to be as big as China, but it could lend to a pretty decent group by, size company, you know, millions, I don't know how much, it's probably yeah. a lot bigger than that even, right? So. Yeah, um, sure. Sure, sure, sure. But I think that it's important to match whatever resources yeah. you have, right? So for example, if you are in, Indone in Indonesia and you are, well, you're not gonna sell rice. I, I right? don't know, why not? You're gonna sell something <laughs> I wouldn't more. say no to that, right? <laughs> Group buy of rice. Look, look at the world people who, who struggle. Coal, coal, well, coal or coal oil. oil, but. <laughs> no. Well, I, I, I suppose that, uh, if you are creating a, a company that is very localized, that know what to get your resources at a, at a good price, and that you're actually adding value by mm. offering something of good quality, you're gonna you're gonna be yeah. able to do it, right? But if you're just importing garbage or creating anything, yeah, well, you already know yeah. my argument. Jangan. So, so I think. Um, I think that there's lots of argument about um, um, so so production in Southeast Asia. I, I think I, I think Alfonso and team has um, built a very sophisticated report looking at uh, the, the the industrial fight fundamentals of Southeast South, Southeast Asia. Um, I, I but but here 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 just just a quick story. Um, I have, I have a good friend who who sells coasters in Indonesia, like put on the mm. plastic coasters. He, he imports yeah. from China and he sells in Indonesia. I mean, an, a, a few containers each month. Um, for a long time, he was trying to source in Indonesia, but he couldn't find a single factory which produces more than four SKUs of mm. coasters. And he can easily source for like thousands mm. of SKUs in, in, in China. So, 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 so I, 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 I almost feel that, I mean, for, for, for this goods, because of the supply chain, and because of the the sort of upstream downstream, and um, and, and because China has this this large volume, it's it's, it's almost difficult to, to 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 replicate that in other countries. Mm. And of course, I mean, beginning of the this year, you hear, heard lots of people saying that okay, let's let's do a backup of the supply chain from China elsewhere. But end Correct. of the year, do you hear anybody still talking about that? Yeah. And uh, and and we do see lots of lots of lots of. Um, Lots of companies uh, moving their production facilities to Vietnam. Uh, I think I think the key reason, I mean, of course, one is industrial policy of Vietnam and also the free trade agreements. But but also another reason is that Vietnam can be easily, I mean, because of, because of the ge geographic uh, proximity, proximity, it can be easily integrated into the supply chain. I mean, factories there can source mm -hmm. from Chinese suppliers really quickly. That's true. Truck two days. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. So so. So, so I think most of the most of the large group buy sites in, in Southeast Asia, aside from the ones selling vegetables, I mean food items that are separate, but household goods and I think lots of them still rely on imports from China. Mm, and uh, that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's something I don't yeah. think it's going to change uh, very soon, un un unless yeah. yeah, unless there's so, some drastic policies. Yeah. So China, China basically built right. a really amazing moat. And, I, and early in the year, I heard all these Western podcasters saying, oh, why don't we just build our own factories? Why is it, why, why is it so hard? You know, but essentially it's to that, that degree of specialization across a few decades and a whole government that's really organized and can push any agenda through, right? 
made that yeah. happen. That that'll be very yeah. hard to displace, probably. And I mean, um, I mean you, you have you, you have a whole city just 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 producing zips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> so, no, and you're you're talking about for the whole world, like that's a, yeah. that's a monopoly for the whole world, right? And that's they 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 they, they, they have a significant economy of scale. Yes, and, yes. And, and labor right. cost is almost insignificant in, in, in that case because they can source. They can. I mean, they, 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 I mean, labor cost. What I mean, depending on industry, between ten to fifty percent of, of of the total cost. But but, yeah. but 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 for lots of lots of industries, the, the ability to source, the ability to to sell what, whatever you bought, the ability to max maximize and optimize your inventory. That's more important than than yeah. the, the maybe ten twenty percent variation in labor cost. But then what does that mean? What does that mean then for yeah. Southeast Asia? Is there no future for Group Buy? Will it get as could it get bigger in the future, or just we have to accept that it's a timing thing and maybe a supply issue that's constrained and it's just not going to be as big as we think or hope? No, I think. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Well, hmm. No, no, I, I just I just wanted to add that it depends of the markup of the traditional retailers in, mm. in Southeast Asia, right? So you need to find. You need to find, uh, if, in order to succeed in the group buy thing, you need to be able to put something in in the middle of that gap. Um, yeah, so it depends of that. It depends of the of the yeah. markup, right? And I suppose that that is going to be different from product yeah. to product. So I mean, if, if we have a, a continued discussion, we could, we should definitely bring some of our friends who were actually in group buy to to probably get their insights on this later in the future. I guess. Yeah, probably yeah. trade secret. Mm. Yeah, should, yeah. Well, okay, Jang, what do you what do you, what do you want to say? Uh, nothing much, but, uh, but 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 I think at the end of the day, it is part of e-commerce, and um, and people talk a lot about, about doing things in rural areas, but I think doing things in rural areas is much much harder than doing things in cities. Mm. So that's something that the I, I don't think many of the e-commerce or group by whatever um, um, sort of services in Southeast Asia have effectively cracked the countryside. I mean, even in China, I mean, the big players are still trying to crack the countryside. But also at the same time, I think the government has probably a more efficient system of administration. Is there any benefits to that for the for where rural can develop somewhat more? And maybe Southeast Asia doesn't have that because it's more fragmented? Or does it not factor in? I think that could be a factor. Uh, I. I, I I don't know. I, I don't know the details, but that could be a factor. I mean, think, but but also in China, I mean, the the rural areas, you know, coastal regions are very different from rural areas in the west. I mean, in the west, one village to another village, it could be like five hundred kilometers. So. Yeah. So I mean, it almost sounds like you guys are very skeptical that Group Buy was going to take off in any shape or form as big as China anytime soon. Then, right? You you will not be as big as China, and uh, I think it's 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 a viable strategy for companies to to acquire users very very fast. But as as they become of a, of a decent size, they are going to compete against Shopee. They are going to okay. compete against Lazada. So let's let's do the intellectual ac exercise as the last question. Uh, who is best positioned to take advantage of Group Buy currently, and who probably should be looking at it in Southeast Asia? So, so do you want yeah. a company name? Uh, to to take to take by. Well, I suppose that. But what what do you mean by take by? To make group by, like who 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 would be in the best position to take advantage of group by and actually make it work? Yeah, sh yeah, something Shopee? like Shopee. Sh sh yeah. sh Shopee Some, over Grab. Something with someone. Grab. Oh. Yeah, I haven't think in that, but I suppose that as this is all about products and they already uh, are efficient in terms mm. of importing products and they have that's true. So they don't need China and all but, that. I but also, that. Uh, Alibaba is looking at Group Buy, right? Or they're already doing it, right? Uh, uh, Huasan, uh, the service I mentioned to you ten years ago, which ten years ago killed all the Group Buy sites aside from Meituan. That's also Group Buy side of Alibaba. But uh, but 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 afterwards they wanted to move more mm. premium. They 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 started to focus a lot more on brands, and that gave Pindodo room to rise because otherwise Pindodo would not have opportunity. What, what what about your thoughts about Carousel? Carousel? Do you think they would have a chance at Group Buy? They they need to find a way to monetize and, and grow up and, and make money, right? So do you think that would work? Uh, I don't understand Carousel as a business model, so I'll pass. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so it's, it seems like there's not too many players who probably could probably make it happen then for Southeast Asia. It just it's like from the discussion, it sounds pretty bleak for Group Five or Southeast Asia. Then is that, is that what I'm getting? I think as a business model, you will work, and uh, and but for individual companies, and I think I think there are lots of startups coming up. So they really, really, really need to first run fast, and second, do, during the, the process running fast, they need to build the, the fulfillment capabilities so that one day, if Shopee or Grab gets big into this, uh, they have a way to defend. Yeah. So, so I guess as as a little wrap up, you know, Group Buy historically, we'll share the links below. To, to the history of, of the articles I was talking about. Um, it's, it's quite complex. You know, you, it, it's a great acquisition strategy in the beginning is uh, if you can actually create value for the community and the suppliers and, you know, you make it mobile and the chat interactions work, it scales very nicely. Um, you know, there's very distinct regional differences from the West to the East of why one worked differently than the other. Uh, Alfonso thinks it's bad. Jankan thinks it's good. <laughs> um, and uh, I think for Southeast Asia, it's still a big question mark, essentially. Is that, is that fair to say, guys? Uh, I, I will say it more, more clearly. It is much mm, more complicated correct. than China. It is. Okay. That I agree. Yeah. And any closing remarks then? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jankan? Thank you. All right. I'll see you guys back next week for the next episode. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.